Hello everyone and welcome to this, what I think is the final episode on how to build your character. My name is Kasanis and after this we're going to be moving on to uh, a mob of some kind. So we're going to continue this series just moving on to another mob or possibly into animation or possibly into how to build a, uh, um, a set, stuff like that. But I think this is going to be the final one in how to build this character. So hopefully you guys followed along, hopefully it was fairly straightforward to do. If you have, I've made a few adjustments to my character here, if you have um, followed along then you should have something very similar to this. You should have a full IK leg system, an IK FK arm system, an FK spine system, you should have a series of blend shapes uh, and eye control. Uh, you should have your eyebrow controls, um, and you should have a complete control structure that is relatively neat and clean and piled together properly. So I've got everything here under my God node, my ground node, and my uh, center of gravity node. Uh, control, excuse me, and everything should be like that. This is ready to go. If I move this guy around, you can see everything is moving in the scene as I expect, except for the skin. So this is what we're going to do today. We're finally going to do skinning. And I know a lot of you guys think, bam, once I get this skinning, then uh, that's it, I can start animating. And you can, but I have bad news for you. Skinning is terrible. Okay, maybe some people enjoy it. I hate skinning. It's very, very difficult to get the things the way you like it. Now, all I can show you is how to do it. I can't actually teach you anything more than that. I can't take you step by step on the proper way to skin this character or anything else. I can show you how to do it and then afterwards it is just going to be hours of nitpicky crappy work that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to go through and make sure it looks exactly like you want it. But I'm going to show you how to set it up right now so it's easy and ready to go. Okay everybody? What we're going to do is we're going to skin each part for this character we're going to skin each part to individual sections, individual joint structures. Uh, normally if you had a character that wasn't as blocky as Steve here, you would you would uh, skin everything together on the control structure, or excuse me, on the, on the joint structure, you'd skin everything kind of together, and then you'd go through and you'd paint the weights, because you want things to kind of move together, you want things to, to kind of, you know, bend and stretch together, that's what skin does, your skin moves along with your body. In the case of Steve, in the case of Minecraft, where we actually have everything broken up, we're not going to do exactly that. What we're going to do instead is bind things to a local skeletal structure. So let me tell you what I mean by that. What we're going to do first of all is we are going to select these joints. We're going to select, well let me start with the leg because it's probably the easiest one to do. We're going to start with this leg right here. You're going to select each of the joints and I'm using shift control and you're going to select each of these things here, each of these bind joints, each and every one, each of the BN values. And I didn't name all them BN, I guess I was being a little lazy. Um, so you're going to select each one and then finally you're going to select the skin itself. So in this case I'm going to select just the leg. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to animation, make sure I'm in the animation tab. I'm going to go to the skin uh, menu option and I'm going to go to bind skin and I'm going to go to this little box at the end of smooth bind and I'm going to click that button. We want to make sure a couple of things in order for this thing to bind correctly. We want to make sure that the selected joints is selected. So I think normally it starts off with joint hierarchy. You want to make sure that it is selected joints and that's going to make sure that only the joints we've selected are going to go into binding the skin. Afterwards, apply it. Bind the skin. Now, let me close this off. If we take a look at the leg, the leg is going to move in the way we want it to. Well, kind of. It's going to bend. And you can see what we're getting here. We're getting a little bit of collapsing. It's not, it's not terrible, actually. It's not so terrible at all. Uh, we're getting a little bit of, of loss. And this is a very low poly character. I made him very low poly. So you're going to have to you have to go through and if you actually want a nice smooth bend in here you might have to add some more poly uh, poly like more mesh to this uh, this structure and and I didn't bother I don't care really you know if it's a little bit blocky it's kind of minecrafty and I don't care so if we take a look now the leg is actually moving along with our controls if I do my toe twist and stuff like that it's moving along just like that and let's see what happens if I do the oh I have the foot rock we never discussed that don't worry about that one um, if I take a look at the ball roll, what happens? Okay, good. So that's moving like that. And it's kind of all moving kind of the way I want, but maybe not necessarily exactly the way I want. Toe roll, not so bad. See, we're getting some kind of collapsing in here, and I don't like that. Now, part of that is the low poly mesh. 
and maybe maybe in the future I'll go through and redesign this. I just did something really simple. In fact, what I was going to use this character for before actually making any of the animations I made was gaming. I was going to actually make a game because the guys at Mojang are so brilliant. They made such a brilliant game. So everything's low poly. Switching a character is as simple as changing a texture. So I was going to kind of make a game based on this as well. Uh, obviously not exactly the same. It was obviously not going to be Steve or anything like that. And obviously you can see again that the character was going to move much differently than uh, than any of the Minecraft characters. It was going to move in a, a slightly more realistic manner. But you really want low poly characters for, for game animation. Anyway, neither here nor there. I went off topic. <laughs> so. What we're going to do now is to make sure this thing bends the way we want it. See this? This I don't like this collapsing. You see how we're getting, we're getting this in here. And maybe you don't care. Maybe you're like, I don't care. I'm not going to do all the extra effort. Well, if you actually want to go through and fix a mesh, here's what you got to do. You got to select the mesh. You're going to go to uh, Skin, and you're going to go down to uh, Edit Smooth Skin, and you're going to find the option to where is it paint skin weights right here and you're going to click it and what's going to happen is well, actually let me bring up the tool window uh, general editors is a tools here where are they where are they settings tool settings okay uh, that's not what I wanted oh yeah here it's over here perfect okay so when you launch that window you're going to get this other when you launch the tool settings window again it was under sorry I had to find it it was under uh, settings and preferences uh, tool settings you're going to get this other window and you want this up while you're painting your weights now painting weights as I mentioned is very tedious and long and boring so first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the joint we want to affect and that's this case it is our left hip and oh, actually you know what let's say it's the Let's say it's the knee. Let's say we want to start with a knee. We want to actually add more. And this is just a guess. I am guessing what I want to add here. I'm going to reduce this a tiny bit. Let's make this to a 0.1. So my actual brush is that's too small. Let's make it 0.2. That's pretty good. Uh, so let's just change my brush size. You can see how the circle is much smaller now. Um, and I'm going to go down here. And you have many different choices in how you're going to do this. If you want to add additional weight to the knee, you can say uh, start adding value. And, and I suggest turning opacity down to maybe 0.25 when you're actually painting. And watch what happens when I click on this. You can see, that's not what I want to happen, but you can see that as I do this, I'm adding more weight and this is actually physically moving this around. And what you have to do, and obviously none of that is any good, I'm going to undo it all, um, what you have to do is make sure that these things here are painted in such a way that the joints themselves, let's try to the hip instead, the joints themselves, no that's not good, actually I'm going to turn this opac, I'm going to turn this value down to 0.25 as well. Um, you just want to add a little bit at a time. And you can see now, if I start to paint this, it's kind of moving in a direction to make a slightly less of a bend. And I don't know what you want it to look like. I'm just adding a little bit here and there, see if I like it. All that's all it is, is painting these weights. Painting, 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 using these values. Once you've added a little bit to the the structure of the hip, maybe you want to move on to the knee and add some stuff to the knee. Maybe you say, oh, I want this to be down a little bit. And you see how that line is actually moving? Uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to do. That's what painting weight is. It's actually extremely, extremely boring to do. I find, and I keep saying that, but you know what? Some people love it, and I thank God because that leaves me more time to animate while someone else is loving painting weights. So yeah, you might just want to do something like this. You know, go through, paint the weights a little bit extra, paint the weights, add some different uh, bending to it. You can see as I paint each time, all I'm doing is I'm clicking directly on top of the of where the vertices are. So wherever these, wherever the edges line up, wherever they come together and they cross you can paint weights there. That's the only place you can actually paint weight is on top of the on top of those crossed areas. So there is no magic to this and I, I keep stressing that because I know what's gonna happen. You guys are gonna watch this video and say I can't get my weights right and you know what I can't get them right either. <laughs> Unfortunately it is just something you have to keep doing, keep doing until it looks the way you want it to look. Okay everybody so I'm gonna go, I'm running out of bandy cam time now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, go back and I'm gonna skin each of these parts so you can see exactly what to connect what to. Okay? I'll stop the camera. I'll be right back. Okay, everyone. We are back. Sorry about that little delay. Uh, ran out of Bandicam. I am using the free version of Bandicam and it only allows me to record for 10 minutes at a time. Uh, and we were at our 10 minute mark already. Uh, okay, so 
I just bound the leg. So as we can see, the leg is now moving as, as we want it to. I didn't actually go through and paint these weights yet. And if you haven't painted the weights, it's basically called a junk bind. And you might want to just do a junk bind and see how everything turns out. So let me just show you exactly what gets bound to what in order for this character to move the way we want it to. The other leg, the same as the first. You want to select the knee, the, uh, sorry, the hip, the knee, the ankle, and all of the joints down here. You might decide you don't want to use some of them. That's perfectly fine. You can say, I don't want to use the, I don't want to use this on here on the heel. Some people don't use the heel at all. I like to use the heel just because it adds a little more structure, especially with a character like this. He's so extremely boxy, he's very, very difficult to do. So I've selected all of the joints of the leg. I next shift select the skin, and I say skin, bind skin. Oops, bind skin, smooth bind, come on. Smooth bind. And again, when I'm done, the leg should move like that. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to go up here and we're going to take a look at the chest. The chest, we're not going to use all of the things. We don't actually want to use all of it. What we want to use is, let me see, what do I think I want to use? I think I want to use uh, the pelvis. I'm going to use the um, spine, the spine, and the spine. So I'm not going to take this one that we called, I think we called it neck, I don't really remember, this one here. I'm not going to use that one. And I'm not going to use the root. I'm not going to bind anything to the root either. Just the ones that actually have some type of control associated with them. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm also going to select the clavicles. Yeah, I think I'm going to. Clavicle and clavicle. So what I selected was the pelvis, the spines, and the clavicles. And now I'm going to select, after I'm all done, the body. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say skin, bind skin, smooth bind. Now, once again, this is going to allow us to have motion in the hips. So this one down here is our individual hip control. And you can see now I've got some hip movement. Yep. And let me put that to zero. And each of these is going to turn the body. And you can see that there's a spot in here. There's kind of a dead spot in here. That's eh, not really that bad. Um, but you're probably going to want to go through and you're going to want to paint the, this, a smooth transition between each and every one of these controls. You want to make sure there's a nice smooth transition between each one. Okay, and again, like I said before, you can only paint along where the actual um, joints serve, or along where the edges meet up. So here, where the edges cross, there's a vertice. You can paint on the vertices. You can paint all along here. And once again, if you're th thinking, I don't like how boxy this is, I don't like this, you have two choices. You can either go through and paint everything, and it could be long and tedious, paint everything here to make sure there's a nice smooth transition between these two controls, or you can go in and you can add additional mesh, and if you add additional mesh, it's going to make this more difficult to paint because you'll have a lot more to paint. You'll have a lot more weights to actually paint. So once again, I have used a very um, low poly character, and uh, this is the results I'm getting. So I'm going to put everything back here. Let me just zero these out so we can see it. Oh, that one's already zero. How about this guy? That guy's already zero. How about this guy? This guy's not zero. Zero. Boom. Okay. The other thing you, I did is I included the clavicle controls on this part of the character, and that's just because I want to get a little bit of movement uh, in here. I want to get a little bit of movement in the shoulder here, and that's going to allow me to kind of adjust the shoulder a little tiny bit and maybe make like a shrug. See how I can kind of lift it up? That's going to allow me to give a shrug to this character as well. Okay, now let's go on to the... Let's put this back to zero. Let's go on to the arms. Come on, zero, get in there. Let's go on to the arms. The arms, again, super easy. What you want to make sure you're selecting is the bind skeleton. We actually have three skeleton structures within the arm itself. We have the FK, the IK, and the bind structure. So make sure you go into your outliner. Uh, let's find these in the joints. Uh, boom, 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 all the way down. Clavicle right. You want to make sure that you are selecting the joints in the bind uh, skeleton. So BN shoulder. I'm using control, selecting in here, be an elbow, and be an hand. And lastly, I'm going to select the mesh. And once again, I'm going to say skin, uh, smooth bind, boom, and done. Now, as we switch back and forth, now we, right now we can see, let me just move this around a bit, so you can see the arm is actually following, which is exactly what we want. Good, good. And again, you're going to go through and you're going to try and paint this structure. You probably will have to do more painting within the actual IK. And let's take a look at the IK if I do a switch here. Let's put the IK on. 
go to 1, and you're going to see the arm jump into its old position. That's because the IK joint structure is still linear like that. But if I move it around, you're going to be able to see this thing here. You know, maybe it'll bend nicely. It, it's actually not too bad. That is not too bad at all. This character didn't have a whole lot of painting to do. Uh, it was just some little bit of, of finagling. And you guys just decide how much you want to do and how much you don't want to do. It's going to be completely and utterly up to you to make this character look the way you want to look at this point. Okay. And as we can see here now, we can get nice shrugs. I don't know. I don't know. And again, this is the difference between IK and FK. You can see that the IK is not moving from this point. Uh, and that's a, a, an error that a lot of beginning animators make. They use IK sometimes, and then they forget to move the arm, and it stays in place like it's attached to something. If we take a look at the same thing in FK, uh, let's bend this down a little bit so it kind of looked the same. And we do a shrug. I don't know, I don't know. The entire arm moves up and down. So that's good. That's he's working exactly like we want. We're going to do the other arm exactly the same way. Make sure we get our outliner up. And we are going to select the BN. Where is you? Uh, clavicle right, clavicle left right here. We want the BN shoulder. BN elbow, BN hand. Select the actual mesh and say skin, bind skin, smooth bind. Okay, perfect. And now this arm moves just like the other one. Bam, 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 bam. Perfect. The last part we got to skin, and this character is fully skinned, is the head. And I'm only going to skin the head. Very, very simple joint, this guy here. Very, very simple. I'm going to skin the head strictly to this joint here, the neck joint. Select the neck. Select the head. Skin, bind skin, smooth bind. And now everything is attached. All right, so now if we move around our god node, we are going to see this character moves about, and the skin goes with him. This character is now ready for animation. There might be a few other things you want to go through and do. If we take a look here at uh, what I've done here, I have removed any of the things I don't want my animator to touch. So in this case, where I'm looking at FK, I only want rotation to occur. And I've gone through and I've removed, let me find out where that is if I can remember correctly. Senator General, Connection Editor, no, it is called, I should have remembered, I should, oh, Channel Control, that's what it's called, I almost forgot. Channel Control, it's going to bring up a new window just like this, this is what the window looks like if you look at Channel Control, to remove something, let me see if I actually have anything left, translate, no, I think I removed it all before, which was kind of silly of me, I should have done it on camera. Ah, this one, this one has a scale, okay, so. Um, I didn't remove this yet, so I'm going to remove it right here. So what I want to do is I want to make sure the animator can't touch things like, on, on this one here, this is my center of gravity, I want him to be able to do rotate and translate, but not scale. So to remove scale, I select the control, I use window, uh, uh, what was it called under again? Under general, and I go to channel control, and it'll launch this window, and the all you have to do to remove it is go scale, click on all these, move it over into the non-keyable and then move it over into the and you want now, now into locked, you want to lock it to make sure they're not touching it you're going to find in here scale scale right here, boom boom and you're going to move it to locked so all I did is I went from keyable I selected it in here, I moved it over to non-keyable then I went into locked, I found it scaled and locked and I moved it over into not, not uh, unto lock. So now it can't be changed. You can't change the scale of this and the animator can't see it. That brings us to the end of our character. If this thing is ready to animate. We will probably go over something very soon about animation. You guys decide what you want to see next. Should I move on to a new mod right away or should I go on to animation or how to build a set? Whatever you guys want to see, you let me know. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up down there. Give me a comment. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe. All right, everybody, have yourselves a great day.